Greetings from Jeff Floor in Shranksville, Pennsylvania. Uh, I want to thank everybody that has supported the Marina Community Trade School project. Uh, those of you that have supported us and stuck with us from the beginning, thank you. It's been great and we appreciate the trust that you've put in us. It, uh, it's not taken for granted. Newcomers to the project, uh, take a critical look at what we're doing and see if we're worthy of your support. We sure could use it. Um, although we're a charitable organization, we don't believe in handouts. Uh, handouts really is not sustainable. It tends to lead to dependency. And uh, we really think that the best way to fight poverty is through education. Uh, specifically, our work in Ghana, West Africa is a trade school. We, we try to provide trade education in a meaningful way to indigenous people. And if you want to learn more about our background, exactly how our project got started on it, please go to moringacommunity.org and specifically on the main menu, just check out our work. You'll find it at the top there and it's a lot of information there. Um, we started the project really as a woodworking project. And, but then, it, you know, it just, by, by growth, it, we grew into agriculture, canning, which has been very, very big, very important for Africa uh, since there is no refrigeration. And uh, it's a good way to preserve food and feed a lot of people and also then we moved into the building trades all the building trades but we didn't desert traditional african craft that's also a big part of the project as well we want to honor that uh, recently our Ghanaian project co-founder abu abdullah returned to america for for a related uh, work related vi visit and abu addressed a small group of our project of really core project supporters here on the farm uh, it was a great presentation. We, we video recorded that and we want to present that to you now for those of you that didn't see it. it we, we, we hope you enjoy it and really see what we're, go what we're doing. So without any further ado, I want to introduce truly the most remarkable, honest, selfless, and truly dedicated man it's been my pleasure to ever work with, Abu Bakar Abdullah. <laughs> Good luck, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you first, but the rest will follow. And I think with what we have here, this is something to present to you. This is Ghana, West Africa, and this is where Ghana is located. And you can see in Ghana, this is where central region is. That is where we are. And I live in Cape Coast somewhere here. So this is the central. And in between, that is where we have our trading center, Moringa Trading Center. This is the whole community of Moringa Trading Center, Bremen Baku. And this is where Moringa is located. You can see this is the Moringa buildings. Uh, you can see it over there. And Moringa make it a, like Moringa community fighting poverty through education, not a handout. You give a man a fish, you teach him, you give a man a feed, you feed him for a day. You teach him how to fish, you feed him for life, which we really believe that's the best way to go in life. And this is the Moringa main campus. You can see all the structures, the classrooms, the dormitories, and the practical rooms. This is what we intend. This is what Moringa is running now. Moringa make it a point like this is the core subject of each and every program that we are running in Moringa School now. We have English, mathematics, entrepreneurship skills, and ICT. What I realize is like most of the students that are coming in sometimes, most of them don't tend to know how to read, even to write. And it will be difficult for them to finish this training and go out there without knowing even how to read or even read what they are. They have a business, how they make their entry, keep their record. So we tend to give them this basic, we tend to give them this basic training of English, math, entrepreneurship, and ICT, computer a bit, which some people can take it as their main course even to learn, but this is a core subject for every student that we have. And these are the programs that we are running. Carpentry and machinery, home canning, general electricals, bosom construction, computer training, bamboo kente weaving, clothes fashion design. All these things are ongoing projects, which any student that comes in have the opportunity to choose any of these in the school. And what we do is that time to time, the teachers and everyone, the staff tend to sit down and discuss some of the challenges and how we can go through and solve some of the problems that we have and also see how best we can make, best develop and make the Moringa more self-sustaining and also see the best out of it. So we tend to sit down and discuss it. And you can see here, the students tend to take both theory and practicals, but we tend to give them more practical aspect more because that's what they really 
more like it. So you can see them, they attend to their classes and the teachers also give them their lessons and lessons know they have to keep everything and they make sure they have time for them to understand everything as they teach them. You can see them and each every student that comes in, we give them, what do you call it, uh, books and a uniform because that's where they keep their notes and everything in together. And you can see them, they are in uniform. In Ghana, you don't tend to give uh, or you let them come in because you have to let them have in uni come in uniform because not everyone have the access to good quality clothes. And if you let them just come in, somebody will not feel comfortable like, today I don't have a good clothes and people are laughing at me. So we tend to let them have the piece of everyone having one clothes so that nobody feels guilty of any reason. So we tend to make one piece of clothes for every student, both boys and girls. And these are the books that we give them for the whole program every year. And you can see Canon has been the main progr program of the whole project. And you can see that every student that comes in, if he doesn't have food to eat, whatever you are teaching him, he doesn't listen because, because it's also a problem. There's a season for food. There's a season that the food goes waste. There's a time that you don't have enough to eat. So Canon has made a lot more difference to even let the student come to the school, to even enjoy the food. Because initially when we started, somebody come to the school only just to get food to eat. But we realized that initially it was free because we tend to serve the community that has helped to make the Moringa project more successful. So it was free, they came for free. But not most of them tend to realize that we can't just come and eat food. We can learn something out of since the training opportunity is there and they grab the opportunity. And you can see most of the canon that we produce in the school or we make in the school, both the students and the caterers use it to make all kinds of food using their local crops that we have. Everything that we do, we use the canon because we let them experience it and also take it back to their community, their homes with their family to help them to understand how important canon is. You can see that there's a season for everything. So tomatoes is the season. We do have a tomato season back home. And when it's time for that season, we tend to buy, it's very cheap. We buy a lot and we preserve them. Everybody in the school is always part of the canon. Canon is not meant for one, one specific group. Every student experience canon project, canon. Everyone is compulsory for every student. So what we do is every student tends to evolve and they love, they love it and they enjoy doing it. And whenever, because they, at the end of the day, they are the one enjoying the food on the shelves. And they also experience that they can make a living out of it. So you can see how much they have made. And we do tend to get, these are the jars and the utensils that we get from the messenger, which makes it a lot more easier. And not only as, these are difficult to get in Ghana, you can't get these jars because we tend to have even volunteers, other people that even come to us for support of jars because how did we get these jars in this country? All these things make it possible because of most of the support that we've given and make things right, Mr. Jeffrey and Madam Linda. You so can where, see that. So where did the jars actually come from? Messenger Company. The, Jordan, the Jordan, Jordan Home Brands. Okay, Jordan, yeah, Jordan yeah. Home Brands yeah. and Ball Mason Jar. Yeah, the Jordan they, Home Brands yes, is the sponsor yes. of all the stuff that you see there. But yes. there's been other auxiliary things like private people have donated for the yes. for the funding for the kitchen yes. to cook it, the cookers. It's been a lot of communal effort here yes. on a lot of part yes. of a lot of different people and organizations. But I would say Jordan is primarily, you know. So what we do is like we tend to, what do you call it, uh, we use it and we also help others who need it individually, like volunteers. I used to get calls from American Peace Corps that have, are doing voluntary work back home. They needed some jars to also preserve some of the vegetables that they get. And with that, it helps them a lot. And we also tend to appreciate how they also help to spread the canning over there. But in Ghana, we are the biggest and the largest canning. Everybody that comes in, they, even they come for the training before we give them the jar because we don't tend to give the jars to somebody who doesn't have experience. And that will create a very bad image to the canning project. So we tend to make sure we give you those training. You can see they use the can for all the meals in the school. They are preparing, there's a variety of ingredients that they get locally. And whoever has known Ghana, this is a palm nut, everything that they need, they need to, they use the canning to prepare the food. 
you can see the variety of the food that they have prepared through this canning that we have put on shelves. And from these, everybody eat from this. These are the meals that they get. All the students, everybody get food to eat, even to the extent that not only the neighboring students or the children's school that we have around, we tend to help them to also come when we have it in abundance, we have them, we invite them. This is our cafeteria for feeding because they realize how much important it is to can. They are getting the sense that even during the dry season where food are difficult, we have a lot in shelves to sell or to give. So, and the food, the teachers also benefit directly, we feed them. So these are some of the qualities that we realize. The carpentry also is another main project in the carpentry, uh, the, the Moringa project. Carpentry tend to play a big role in all the department because everything that we produce, carpenters are there to do it. Everything that we produce in development stage, that's carpenters. You can see all the students, you can see both male and female are all involved in the carpentry project. Why? Because we tend to realize that some of the students that come in, they don't tend to understand. They start to with catering, they, they change their mind in the long run. So we realize that we let them have the taste of every courses that they have, we have in the school. This way it will help them to decide with the help of the teacher that this is exactly where your talent or what you are good at. So we tend to let them have this experience for full year before we take the next decision, we help them to take. You can see the third world table saw machine make a lot for Moringa. The success that we have and where we have reached today, the table saw machine, it's more easier to work with. It makes our life more easier. You can see I can take several days to complete one door. With this table, with this table saw machine, third door table saw machine, I can produce within no time, which it doesn't need much electricity to work with. With just a generator, you can produce, you can work with. I don't need to wait for any high three-phase light before. So you can see that I can transport it to any site when we get job. Any site that I get, oh, I need you to build a wardrobe for me. I just take it and take my generator. I will finish my job. And this has made a lot more different in our lives back home. And most of the, what do you call, job we get, people tend to appreciate it. Everything we produce, with the help of the machine, we make our own DEXs. The student does it. And you can make furniture out of it. It helps you a lot. Both boys and girls are the ones doing this job. They are learning through this. And through this, they will choose what exactly they think that is the best for them. These are some of the furnitures we produce. These are some of the cabinet doors. We make all from the third world tables or machine. You can see both hand tools and the machine are being used at the same time. These are some of the furnitures we make from the third world tables or machine. So you can see how fast we get job, we go outside. This is a wardrobe. We use the table saw machine, we cut everything within short time, it's done. You just move to the next stage. So this is some of the challenges that we face and it has make it more easier. And this challenge that came in really brought us back like we have to sit down. This road is the road that lead to the, our school. And it's also the road that the whole community used to go to farm. If I recall, I show you the, the map of where you realize that where Moringa is, there's no other development behind. So that's the only where their farmland is. And you can see this bridge collapsed. And fortunately, because of your support, we were able to fix it with the help of the community. So we were able to get the covet. All this covet, I bought it in Cape Coast because we can't get it there. And how we do is like, because we have the truck, that makes it easier. We tend to transport this, this COVID from Cape Coast to Isikuma. All the material that we use, all the truck is the one bringing it to us at the door. These are Moringa trucks. These are Moringa, this is Moringa truck, which makes it a lot more easier for everything that we do. You can see them bringing both rebars and the sand for everything that we do. And all the carpentry structure, the COVID that we did, all this done by the student. And you can see after we remove everything is ready, we have to let it settle for 21 days as a concrete. But unfortunately, nature, nature has its own reason. It washed off every sand feeling that we did, which created a very big role. I have a comment on how you get the volunteers from the community to help you. You, how, you, know, you offer them some food. Like, tell them how that works. What we do is like, we realize because Moringa have too much to stock to, to, to save, like feed his student because we preserve, we realize, okay, the community will come in to assist us 
because they also need the bridge. And what you do is that they also want us to what do you call a help to make it right. So they, uh, they provide their labor, like they, we, are, we are here to help and we will also give them the little food we have so we make the bridge more easier and successful to build it. And you can see that everything that we do, the community tend to come together to help in the labor. And you can see this day we are all in numbers, the sand and the material that we, uh, the fund we get from say to make it, to buy the materials and their labor service and the food and the other support that we get from the school that we have preserved. There's we absolutely no government help here. The government. Whatsoever. This is all the, you people and Abu and the people that he has organized. There wasn't that any, there yeah. wasn't any government issue here. We tend to, we, and that gave us the authority to even block the government from using the, the bridge. We did. Yeah. He came in, he came in to build a water project behind us. As a government awarded a project to a foreigner. We don't know that person is. And the person came in and awarded it to the local contractor. And they wanted to use it to transport their materials back to where their project is. And that's why we told them that we came to you for help. Not even one cement back you were given to us. Now you want to use this bridge. So the, the, one, the chief executive of the community, of the district, came in and he said, we said no, we, you didn't give us anything, so we won't let you use it. If you want to use it, we want you to do additional gutters to make it more easier that we don't do. So this is also your job. Yeah. Then we will let you use it. And he decided, oh, then we have to take the project. and say, you can take it. Yeah. The, owner of the, the, the owner of the project came in. He said, you will not take the project anywhere. You will do it exactly where I show you to you. Because this man, these people have already built a bridge. You need to do the rest because this project is not end today. We will continue working on that project. So you need to build it. And due to that, we stand on our feet that they are not going to use it until they agree to do something about it. And that's what happened. So we are still waiting for them to do it. The project has not started until they, they do something to make sure that, because when the rain, it rains, it washed out all the soil from the top there and bring it to, there's a lot of pressure on this bridge. So that's what happened with the government issue. And he realized that if he mess up, wow. we can take it, or we call the media. We realized after the rain was washed, <laughs> yeah, they are there to support, yes. So we realized that after all this challenge, we got the support to make it right, which we didn't let them use it. That's so, our uh, Moringa van there too. That's yes, the that's our van that we used. For getting to, the students around for special field yes. trips. So we use this. And after the expansion, you realize that all the pressure that water can, it, it was more successful. And the community are very much pleased. Not even in our presence. The community would really defend the bridge because they know how much it has, it has helped them that now they don't want anyone to break it or misuse it. So this is another trade course that we have, electrical trade, which the student, every student goes through this and it has helped them you can make a living out of it if you come out successful. And we make sure every student that we train are very well trained because we tend to give them more practical than the theory. You can see them retaining the practicals. They have to go on board and also present it practically and see how much successful all the way. We tend to even get an attachment. We send our student. Yes, uh, the elect our electrical tra our students are trained so well that the local utility company will use our students to help them install. Yes, and, and you can have, see them that being. Yeah, you can see them that. Here, this is where that they are mounting the high tension pole, and the, this electrical company involves. So we tend to send our student to do an attachment, which they are learning. And at the same time, it creates opportunity in future. We hope they can get some job within the company or something like that to work with them. So this is more opportunity for the student. Not only that, we get computers to train them ICT, computer training. And we realize that it's not only good to train them how to use software, we train them hardware, how to pieces them, repair them when there's a fault. So every student is obligated to pieces every one computer in pieces and fix them back make them work so that they understand. We tend to have more of our used product. We tend to have more used electronics. So mostly you will get job out of this out there. 
that people want you to fix their computer. So every student is obligated to pieces, all the power supply, memory card, everything. They have to do it. And you can see them, every student, both male and female, are part of it. We're also fortunate to have access to internet in our compound, which gives the teachers opportunity and the student to do more research, to understand and get more information that they require and also communicate. You can see them also doing the software training here as the, all the students are in numbers. We realize that Moringa community makes it a point to maintain and sustain because of what we have and tradition, art and craft. So what we did is we realized uh, Moringa has a, a, Ghana have a more bamboo, which is there in abundant and it's not expensive, very cheap to buy. And we realized if that's the case, what can we do from the, what we have? We started producing bags from the bag. We, we, we cut the bamboo, we take them strips, and we weave them and we make something bags, more different types of designs, all these things. It's even you can make a living if you can make bag out of this bamboo. You can make so many things out of this bamboo. And it doesn't cost much to get even the bamboo. You can get it free because unless you are buying it, you are taking it in a large quantity. You can see them weaving the bamboo. And you can even mix the kente and the bamboo bags to make so many different types. I'm telling you, most of these students don't tend now don't buy bags in the shops. They just created their own bags. It just suited them, which they make a living. And not only that, they know they can make even living out of the only bags. So that is also another, it's a free that every student has to go through. Every student can make this in Moringa now. Not only that, you all know that Moringa has a, a Ghana has a, a kente, it's a traditional cloth, which I know even in Ghana, it's a very expensive cloth. It's all hand weave. And we tend to train these children to learn how to even make kente. And as you can make kente, every single tradition, traditional, or every single home in Ghana, it's more obligated or it's part of the tradition for you to have one piece of kente cloth because you definitely need it one of the days. If you don't need your children will need it. Because in Ghana, when you complete school, uh, eighth grade, every student is obligated to wear a kente cloth to make, take a picture of from that. That is the tradition. So everybody, and you know it's expensive, which the children are now learning how to make it. Once they know how to make it, they go out there, they can do this and sell. They, are, they know how to make carpentry work. They can build their own looms to do it. So with this, it makes life more easier. Like everything that they need, is given to them, right? And all this opportunity is now happening at the Moringa Training Center with these students, which they can go out there after their graduation to make something and make a life out of what has been given to them. And you can see how it's done, how they weave everything from the scratch. They have to start from the scratch. These are the thread, variety of the thread that goes. So they have to put them together. This is how they put the thread together. And this is how it's being weaved. You can see, this is how they sit at behind it to weave. And as soon as they finish, all that you see, they produce it. And these are some of the choices and the colors and the design that we get. Not only that, we also produce uh, batik, tie and dye, clothes, which when we produce it, variety of designs, colors, they learn from these things and they make life out of it. And you can see how it's done. All these ones are the variety and the choices of the clothes that they have made. You can see them. They, this is just a, a raw material. Once they finish, they also get it and sew clothes. Not only that, the students make their own aprons for the training and the, the same as the catering department. They do this, this they are sewing machines for the sewing section. So by producing the material, the sewing department who are there to also make something out of it, which that helps them to sell the clothes out there or to even produce it for themselves. You can see how they are sewing most of it. The uniform that they have, they sew it in the school. Nothing goes out there. So we try to move everything which they are learning it by themselves. By you having the opportunity of getting all these ideas and knowledge, what exactly do you think you can make it out there? So we give them the opportunity of them sewing the, their uniform. And this is also a way of, this is where we have a farmland at Asinkurua. It's a different place. 
because our land at the Bremen Baku has uh, too much rocks which we can plant. So we had the land as in Kuruwa, and this is our farmland, what we produce. Mostly when we produce from here, we tend to bring it to the cell for preservation and we sell them in the market. We don't even have, we can't even supply what the market demand after what we have preserved. We, because what the seeds we get from the state that being sent to us, it really helps to produce a lot. And you can see, when we, the more we get the seed, the more we expand the land. And everything is done by digging with a hole and taking all the roots and everything, making sure the land is clear. Because when you clear the land, you have to farm on it. Because if you leave it, it will grow back again, which you don't want. So we do it as we expand it gradually. You can see them moving. Some part of the land have cocoa. And these are the beds being laid out for and we have to prepare the land to make it more fertile because as you farm for several times, we get the chicken done and we try to mix it with the soil to make it more fertile for next. And these are some of the seeds we get, what we nest, we nest them and we name them so that we know which grows well, who doesn't grow well. Then we can send a report, this one is not growing well. You can see this is the farmland of the school. We do have farm at the school and we have some in there farmland. So this is some of the things that the students are planting. And they are, you see that this is a farm, the main farmland. These are green peppers and other variety, uh, cucumber. And you can see cabbage, how much it produces. We preserve, we sell them. The market demand is very, because they realize what we are producing is more organic and it really helps a lot for what we are doing. They also love what we are doing. And you can see this is something that after all we go through, goats and sheep tend to come in and eat more, some of the crops that we have. So we couldn't stand this thing and we realized that no, we have to do something to prevent them. That's where we realized we have bamboo. What can we do with the bamboo? We go in with the, the truck to get them and simply ship them and start fencing the, the farm. We couldn't fence all, but we tried to fence what we can to prevent them and you can see how much the farm is well growing, all the vegetables are growing very well. You can see how much fast, all, the, all these are cabbages when we produce them. And as we grow them, we realize that this is the farmland at the school, lettuce, they are ready for harvesting for the student to eat and also preserve them. They learn a lot from every single aspect of the project, which makes it a lot more easier. And these are some of them that have been transported to the town to sell and also preserve them in the school. Because we have so many food that we preserve and also students, no matter what somebody is, there will be a leftover. We rather raise some chickens around so that they will also eat the leftovers at the, the one that has got waste. And this is some of the help of the student that making sure that this thing is going on well. And you can see not only that, there's also a honey production in the farm in the school land, which we tend to train the student how to process or produce honey. And if you just have it at your farmland, you just follow the procedures, you have more honey to sell, to make a living out of it. And you can see that with the help of the, you know, everything that we get equipped, we are very well equipped to go there without any fear because you know honey are very sometimes aggressive. So <laughs> you don't want to mess with them. So we tend to be well protected and we will to take them, every student, to witness and how it's done so that they will learn. And also when it's time for getting them, they will just go there and get them. And you can see this is how we get our water to supply the farmland. We, when it rains, it's a stream that we dig in it to make a very big pit, then it stays in. But once we harvested the rain, we use the rain for watering. If it's finished, then we have to clear in and wait for another rain. And if you couldn't, we dig a well. And we can go as deep as 30, 40 feet ground oh to get the well. Sometimes you won't get it, you, the water will not come. You just have to close it and start another until you get it. So this how, is- How many here would go down 30 feet without 30 feet to get, get it, it. Yeah. But tell them, about, tell them about the well to builders travel. I mean, that's what they do and back up there, they'll yeah. come on it. So this is what we do, we dig the, when we dig the well, it, that's what I say, like, 
it's not always that you get access to the water because sometimes you dig it at the wrong place. So you tend to move to the next stage till you dig until you get the water. So do, anytime you do it, you have to close this one and start a new. And because of the water issue, what we do, when we get it, we pump it from the, the, uh, where the water is, then it supplies the farm. And we use it for watering the farm. We realize Moringa, we have so many issues which we realize that Moringa Fresh Leaves has, because you know Moringa is the name of the project. And if you don't use it, we tend to, one time I went for the Register General, where they register our documentation, our document, and they said, why are you using Moringa name and you don't produce Moringa? Because people will be calling you and asking you about Moringa. So it's part of our program. But so we realized Moringa has so much to offer, which even at this day, Moringa still produce and give so much information what it does in the human body. It multiplies so much vitamin and it's a full supplement. What we did was we did so much that Moringa has so much importance and benefit. And we are happy today that we have planted them all over in our farmland. And we are really, really benefiting from the Moringa plant. We process them, we plant them, we prune them, we take the, all the leaves. Everything is useful about the Moringa. This is how we, we get the leaves, we wash them with the clean water and salty water, and we dry them, and we try to pound them and make them in powder, and we sell them. And this is how we make the Moringa powder leaves. And you make leaves to make tea out of it. Not only that, uh, we, we, Moringa, we get requests, Papa, uh, Jeff and I get requests from uh, Canada and from people in the United States when they find out that we actually have real Moringa, Moringa. powder. So uh, it's a lot. He's asking us yes. if they can buy some. We say, no, we can hardly supply yes. the people in Africa, and they're the ones that really need the high nutrition yes. food. Yes. But people throughout the world know about it. Yes. And you can see that Moringa, we realize that what can we do? because we have a lot to gain from Moringa, to also help ourselves, help the community that we live in. Sanitation is a problem, which any, no, everyone knows in Africa. So what can we do to help make changes in many's life, which I tend to communicate back and forward with Mr. Jeffrey, and he gave me a best idea of bringing those problems back down. We realize that the seeds, Moringa seeds tend to be useful in water purification. You can use Moringa seed to purify water 99%, which you can see clearly. You just get the seeds and you mix it up in one spoon, it's enough for one liter, and that's what we use it to purify our water. And also people are benefiting from the seeds that we get and also that they also planted their own in their backyard and they are using it. It makes it a lot more different. The idea we got is like every time it rains, because this everybody tend to go somewhere, sit anywhere for toilet, they tend to, when it rains, it send out a, a cholera outbreak, which it breaks, because you realize that the same cholera outbreak, they tend to, what do you call it, drink this water. That's what they drink. And when it comes like this, it creates problems. So we realize that since we are purifying the water, we can't always let it happen before we, so we tend to, okay. The most problem is like stopping this from happening out there. But rather, if you are able to build a poor flash toilet in your own community, in your own house, you can always save and prevent this thing from happening. And Mr. Jeffrey gave us the idea of how to make this in the cheapest, in a very easy, all you need is one liter of water to flash it, which we put it in practical with a heat support and the idea is we started making, getting the necessary materials that we can get locally. And with the help of the student and the students who are learning from this, they started building everything from scratch with a plan that we got from Mr. Jeffrey. You can see them. They are learning from this exactly because this is the building construction section. They are learning from this because they realize that they also themselves live in the same community that has a very bad environment. So with them being able to build this, they can even make a living out of what they have now. So we started teaching them how to build it, and you can see how nicely everything is structured because you tend to, it's never going to get waste. 
you tend to use one side. One is full, you close the other side, you use the other side. By the following time, you know how much you need. All you need is just one liter of water to flush, which any water is not just any special drinking water. Any water is useful to build. And you know that time to tell the students that we have, we have so much back in enrollment that they want to come in, more than what we can take now, which we realize that more and student, more and more students wanted to join the school, but school is not free because we can't sustain it if we make it free. So we realized they want it, they can't get it. And Mr. Ge Mr. Jeffrey gave us the opportunity of having a student loan to make it right. Like if a student come to the school, we give them the opportunity with what they have taught in the school, they can really pay back those loans within no time. And that loan will benefit the next student yet to come. So with this opportunity, we get so much student in the school, which they really appreciate. You can see that they came in numbers because we have them behind, they wanted to come. And now that they have given the opportunity with the, all the necessary knowledge, they can make, even they can pay before they leave the school. Because if you are in the school, you can make bags, you can make kente, sell it even during vacation. You can still pay your debt before even you complete the school. So you can see how much it has really helped the student, which we have so much large enrollment behind to come in. And you can see them, not only that, we realize that we need the community to also witness exactly what is happening in the Moringa Center with the eighth grade, those who are yet to finish to join the school, to join us as an eighth grade. We called all the headmasters of the school because they already know and they have also witnessed to come in and also witness the development and the changes that Moringa is presenting to so many people in Ghana. So every student or different type of uh, schools are invited and they come in numbers to witness the development because once they finish, they know that where they can choose their next future from. And you can see them, they come in numbers to at the Moringa compound to witness every single, what do you call it, uh, project that we do and that gives them much more excited, presenting some of the canning product that we preserve, all the bamboo. We take them around to witness everything, which you know that this is a lot from, which they are more than overwhelmed to excited, like, wow. And you can know that we have more than what we can take even behind in enrollment that we are, they are waiting. You can see them presenting themselves. And this is the whole community. Sorry. This is the whole community of the Moringa, uh, that's the Bremen Baku. This is the Bremen Baku, where the school project is. That's the village. And you can see where Moringa is. That is where the red mark is. So this is how far and how the community is. That is why you can see that Moringa is doing so much that all the, the community and its surrounding villages are more than, it's like, giving them so much that it's really making a lot more changes in so many people's life back home. So with this, we can say less, but to thank you and let you know that everything that you have given to us has really made so many people's life different and has changed their life, has made them better today. So many people don't have hope. They tend to choose anything. Because where is the hope? But now they can know that they know that what they have in front of them, it's enough to survive. They can decide what they want to do. We give them the pleasure and the opportunity, so much ideas. And I'm telling you how much excited they are. Even to the extent that when they go for, we send them for vacation, they don't want to leave the compound because they have so much opportunity and they, ha they are well trained and they are very happy which I know with the blessings of this joy being put in them, the blessing will surely return to you almost every day in your life, throughout their life, not only them, even to the next generation, to their children, because the benefit will keep on moving to everybody. And I can't thank you enough. I couldn't do this without the proper direction of a good parent, Mr. Jeffrey and Madam Linda. I can't thank you. Because, you know, it's not easy, but they were there to make it right.
they give me the support. I know it's hard to convince so many people because don't get them wrong, they don't understand. Because this is the kind of environment they grow up with. Sometimes you want to give something, he doesn't even know or understand. Until you made him understand, he realized that, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that you are in for good because of the environment that they live in. So I always thank you and I want to let you know that whatever you did is very well appreciated. We thank you very so much. I hope you enjoyed the presentation you just saw. Uh, I want to thank Abu for putting such a fine piece together. I also want to thank the people that have really supported the project from the beginning and also the integral people that really have been involved to make it possible, specifically my wife Linda Lohr who's really started the whole canning program. Certainly Abu because uh, without Abu the project never would have gotten off the ground. He is the key component in the organization. Uh, finally, I want to leave you with uh, a song that uh, I think is very, very nice. Uh, it, was, it was sung to me on the, uh, my last visit when I was leaving on the last day. I think you'll find it enjoyable. Here are the kids from the Ringgit Community School of Trades. <laughs>